them, if you believe in a trinity, it's your damnation. So we can't reconcile those two, you see. Perhaps for my own perspective, it's only certain qualities of each religion mm. that point towards the same, the ones that actually point towards the same truth. If you were to look into each religion and see and read into it, see which, which things go where, then there is some similarities to every single one. But like you said, not everyone at the same kind of salvation. Yeah, yeah. No, I th maybe that's why I can't follow one specific one, but I believe there's beauty to. No, I think that what you're talking about is like truth exists in many of the world religions. Yeah. Truth maybe not. Maybe not everyone. Not maybe not everything in those world religions. Yeah. You uh, find as true, but I I pose the claim that Islam has nothing in it that doesn't agree with your natural disposition to the creator. So for example, when we believe that there's one God, logically it makes sense that God is only one because if you have two absolute powers, they're not able, they're not absolute because then they would co cooperate with each other. So if you have more than one God and they are cooperating, then they're not absolute in power and we believe God is absolute in power. If we look at the Trinity, for example, and the idea that God is divisible, it's the same concept. So right away, if we're saying that gods can, or entities within a Godhead can cooperate with each other, that means that they're not absolute in power. And so right away, we believe that Hinduism doesn't have a logical perspective of, of God. Christianity doesn't have a logical perspective of God. Ah, but logical. Maybe it should be logical. Well, I, I would I implore you to give me some feedback <laughs> about how I'm not making sense. If I'm no, saying I'm not that, saying you're yeah, not yeah, making yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I my own perspective is kind of me. Awesome. Where I don't believe in necessarily one God who is a person. I believe that there is the spirit of God within all within all of us. And certain certain people, like Jesus, for instance, had reached a certain point and been able to tell us that story, and he was crucified before that. Okay. That everybody kind of in every religion they have that person who maybe they think is God, but really it was the person that is trying to no, tell you the same like thing I that God is in inside. In the ball. Okay. So it's interesting that you, I'm guessing that that's your influence is Christianity. No? No, I would say that I just don't know any other Any other name. Uh, okay. Right? Like, because I don't want to just start throwing names that I don't no, know. Of course. No, no, no. For sure. Because I'm. Um, or so like for, for, Buddha or Gandhi or, you know, like they all have the same. They all reach the same kind of stage, the same perspective of all things. It's basically just be good to others. So I'll put this forward to you, right? That there is a God. He's a creator of everything and all that exists. And he's one. One uh, entity that had no beginning, has no end. He knows everything. He's all knowledgeable, right? And this creator, he didn't create us without a ability to know what is right and wrong. So he sent messengers throughout history. So some of them we know the names of, like uh, Noah, Moses, uh, Jesus, Adam, Abraham, all of these names we have in the Quran so we can confirm that they are messengers of God. The people that you mentioned, like Buddha or, or uh, Confucius or these other people, right. they are not mentioned by name. So maybe they are, maybe they're not. It, we are unsure, right? But you have to be unsure of that. And yeah, so, but what we are sure of, is that there was a person named Muhammad, peace be upon him, peace be upon him who was, is the claim that he is that last and final messenger who gives that last source of guidance to know who the creator is and to understand what the absolute morality is that God wants from us. So now if we, if we assess that claim, if I as a person that looks into Islam and finds anything wrong with it, then I, am, I encourage you to do that. Because the claim is that Islam is that one religion that God accepts as that method to know who he is. So, for example, uh, Muslim in the Arabic terminology, it just means uh, a person who submits to the will of the creator. So when we 
are trying to know what is right and what is wrong, we use our revelation, the text, as an objective source to decipher what is right and what is wrong. Because if I, you mentioned like, you know, just do good, be, be a good person. It all sets up with the right? If I follow that in my life, it is inevitable that society will come to a chaotic point where this person thinks this is right, but this person thinks this is wrong. So subjective morality in a society will lead to chaos, right? And I think that us living in, the, in BC, especially in the lower mainland, where it's possible now for men to give birth, that it is a place now where that chaos has arrived, where we don't have things as absolute truths anymore. You understand where I'm going? Yeah. Right. I think that chaos is all a part of the story of the salvation, you know, because we, we're not able to have salvation without this chaos, or else we would, it would just be like ignorance. It would just be bliss. We wouldn't know. We wouldn't know of it because we're not confronted with it. We're not able to battle through it. I see I what think you're it's saying. Something that we have to evolve. It has to happen. It has to happen. Yeah. To evolve past it. So I guess it is what the creator's love is. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. So what side then do you want to be on? Do you want to be on the side of? <laughs> do you want to be on the side that's you know leading to chaos, or the side that believes that they have that absolute truth? See, I don't want to pick a side per se because it's all part of the story. You know, all this this whole story is all. It's all meant to happen the way it's meant to happen. As individuals, I feel on ourselves and expressing our love of ourselves outward to others. At an individual level, that's how we will change change things is by working on ourselves individually. If everyone look inwards and heal themselves all at the same time instead of trying, hey, you heal this feel externally, then boom, it would be magic. Magic would happen. But now everyone's so focused on trying to fix or explain or show their way onto people rather than just being and everyone just being and raising. Okay, so do you believe in a creator? Like in, in, a, in, a, in a God that is an all-powerful entity? I believe that there is a grand consciousness in all things. And I'm not sure if that has it ever had a physical form. I'm not sure. I cannot say. I can't say it. Because for me, the same thing, believe, is the same as saying, I don't know. I, well, okay, saying, that's I interesting. believe in Christ, you would say, I know in Christ. Belief is like, I believe that this may have happened instead of saying, I know this happened. Mm. So for me, I cannot say really that I believe in this. Or I believe Does it have a that. difference from you though? Like in your application in your daily life versus like, I know that that light is green versus I believe that that light is green. <laughs> well, that's tricky. Maybe we all see different, right? For myself, I know it's green, but who knows what it actually is. I have no idea. <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? Like, in actual application, there's not really much difference. It's just semantics at that point. You see what I'm saying? Like, I guess it would be based on personal experience. If something occurred in my life to give me that knowing, then it would be it would change. Like from, I get what you're saying. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, like for example, do you believe or do you know that your mom is your mom? I know. Okay, how do you know? <laughs> she gave birth to me. Were you there? She, Did you witness it? There is evidence. Did you? What evidence? Is, what evidence is there? If you don't mind. There's video proof. There's. How do you know that that's you though in the video? Story of her. I guess you have to. I don't you know. have to believe her. You have to that's believe her, right? Uh, she said that. Well, and yeah, I wouldn't say I believe. Believe what she says. I know what she says. Oh, well, you know. True. know. Uh, but do you but like, words, words are, do you see what I'm saying? Because like knowing has the idea that there is proof for you that goes beyond a reasonable doubt, whereas belief has the connotation to it that I have reasons to believe this is true, and it has passed that threshold of that doubt for me. You see, yeah. so like even though, and I'll, I'll bring it back to myself. I don't want to put you on the spot. Oh, okay. <laughs> even even though I 
haven't performed a uh, paternity test. I believe that my mom and my dad are my parents. Okay. Even though I haven't performed that, I don't know with certainty, 100%, but all of the reasons that I have gathered in my life make me assume and believe that they are my parents. Yes. So, for me, that means that it is not necessarily the case that knowing something leads to me acting on something different from a belief. A belief can allow me to act on that. Um, piece of fact or piece of information the same way as I knowing something to be a fact. So bringing him back to the discussion about God, my belief in God and there being one God that has no partners and doesn't have, a, is indivisible. Yeah. My belief in that one God makes me act in a certain way that I can apply in my life and it doesn't change. Um, it doesn't mean that me having uh, a doubt that arises doesn't change that belief because my overwhelming belief based off of the reasons that I've gathered has me have a solidarity in that belief. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when I put forward this idea that there is a creator and that, that he's a, your, your, your view that he is a ultimate consciousness, do you believe that he is intelligent? Yeah. Because your intelligence is shown in all yeah, things. Because if you see us, we yeah. are designed. We are so complex. Absolutely. Yeah, so complex. So you think the creator is intelligent? Absolutely. It, it, it is the, the root of intelligence. So do, do you believe that that intelligence leads to a will? You guys have an interesting thing going on. <laughs> think. Like, we, we, yeah. we have to stu we study these things because... Um, when you have a will and without intelligence, if you're, if you're, if you don't have the intelligence, then the divine intelligence, you know what I mean? Like, does intelligence have not having intelligence make you ignorant? Not, not having intelligence, I believe, makes you not be able to see the whole picture. If you're ignorant of the thing and have a will, I guess. You can have a will as ignorant, but the question is, if you're intelligent, does it also presuppose that you have a will, that you're able to perform actions? Maybe awareness of that intelligence, perhaps. Okay, so... You can have intelligence without being kind of awake to your own intelligence. I don't know how to really... <laughs> okay. Like, you can be a smart person and, and uh, not be... Oh, aware of it. Yeah. Okay. You just have it. You're just living a story like every day waking up, putting on your clothes, going to work, and not being within those moments, within your thoughts, being conscious of them as you have them. Okay. So our, our claim is that the Creator, He is intelligent, and He does have will. And because He has the ability to create in these complex ways that you are, you've described, like how we are very complex as human beings, it, it means that he has that will, intelligence and he has that will to perform action, right? So what does that mean for us is that this creator, we believe he didn't create us with no reason. That he created this worldly life that we're experiencing for a reason. And the Qur'an tells us what our reason is. Our reason for this creation, this experience that we're having, is that we are supposed to, first of all, recognize that there is a creator, worship that creator, meaning worship him by knowing what is correct and what is incorrect, and realize that this worldly life is a test. Yeah, absolutely. So this, so this worldly life is a test, and it is a test to find out which amongst the human beings and another creation called the jinn, that we can't see, which one of us will be the best in performing good deeds. Mm -hmm. And if we are able to first have that belief in that creator and the prophets and messengers that he sent that gave us guidance as to what is that absolute morality, oh. and then we follow that and we do our best in striving on that path, then we have the promise of an afterlife in an abode that is a paradise 
that we that no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, no uh, tongue has ever tasted, and an imaginable pleasure, an imaginable paradise that exists based off of a belief that we have, that the Qur'an, that revelation that He's given us, is that last revelation from the Creator. What is that? When I say this to you, do you resonate with it? Does it make sense to you that that's kind of the... Yeah, I think like it's, it's a beautiful picture. Right. And I would be, I think it'd be foolish not to look into it and 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 follow through with some of the, the higher moral issues not issues the conundrums <laughs> that it poses <laughs> well but i also look at at everything and i don't just necessarily live my life based on what one religion says because even if it is the one because in the end it's how Happen. What helps you? So I don't, yeah. I, for myself, I don't want the religion to be my dependency on how I get to that point. Okay. I want to be that point without it and have them all help me. Reach so out. you want to touch the stove before someone tells you that it's hot? If, well, that's the problem with metaphors, right? <laughs> you know, like maybe it's necessarily touching a hot stove. So I'm saying, like, <laughs> Like, because what our belief is that the prophets and messengers that God sent, they know the path already. And they're trying to illustrate it and illuminate it for us. So that when we're walking through the darkness of this world, we can see the straight path based off of what they've taught us. Are they trying to illuminate the path for us or trying to teach you how to illuminate the path for yourself? The path is already there. Path is already there. Path is already there. It's darkened for many. It's darkened for many, but they have the flashlight to show us, hey, this is it, right? And that's it's a universal path for all human beings because all human beings have a similar base experience in this worldly life that we go through the daily, you know, eating, drinking, uh, going through the bodily functions, engaging in relationships with either you know the the opposite gender, and having families and this kinds of things. And, and dealing with trying to provide for our family. This is all base experiences that we all go through. So how do we know what is the correct method of performing those tasks? The Creator gives us revelation in the Quran. This is a gift for you, my friend. Uh, thank you. He gives us this. Oh, I love reading. <laughs> no, you seem like a very sincere friend. All different kinds. All different kinds. You seem like a very sincere person. That's the first thing that I felt is like, this brother is really sincere. And that's why I, I think perhaps for my, my, uh, my hope anyways, is that perhaps think about, because um, I was in your, I, I'm not going to say that I was just like you or anything like that, but I was at a similar point in my life where I was taking from each thing that I found to be the truth and trying to create my own, my own philosophy, my own way of life. And when I did that, I found that inevitably I would either... Um, find myself in um, mor moral um, conundrums where I wasn't able to really know whether what I was doing was right or wrong, or I was either failing completely, right? And not that that's a bad thing, like obviously you need to fail, but I also um, don't want to put myself in serious jeopardy, right? Um, so like heroin or something, you know what I mean? So for that reason, I implore you to think about if we can, if we say that Islam is a cup of water, right? Islam is a pure cup of water. There's no deficiencies. There's no dirt in it. It is pure, pure water. I wouldn't want as a person that's trying to have the purest form of water to take a glass of water that has one drop of urine in it or one speck of dirt in it or one speck of filth in it. I'd rather have the pure water. So for when I'm when I've researched all the other world religions, I found dirt in their cups of water, but I haven't found any dirt in the religion of Al Islam. And so for that reason, I implore you to like think about it like that. That yes, perhaps there is truth found, perhaps there is pure water found in these other religions, but do they have the ability to test to to maintain the test of time? for a morality that I can apply in any time and any error and any people, that's the test. So are you were looking for, on your own, the highest moral code in all oh, things, you ended up yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. 
But I wasn't always Muslim. I accepted Islam 10 years ago. And I think at the time where I, I feel like, because I resonate with you a lot, my friend. At the time where I was kind of like really vibing with Taoism and, and the Tai Te Ching. Yeah. And I was really like, I really found it um, profound. Some of the way that to, to, to woo way woo and just having the, the action without action, yeah. that idea yeah. of not causing a, not having a footprint on this earth. Right. right, like being able to just maneuver through it without causing any damage or not causing any, um, you know, increase. Right. Inside to the material. Exactly. So I, I resonated with that. But for me, and I, I'm sure other people have a different experience, and that's I'm not de- I'm not um, degrading anybody's experience. But meditism, uh, meditation for me, didn't allow me to tap into that creator. The way that the prayer in Islam does. I'm not saying that that's like, that's just my subjective reason, right? But if I look at the text of the Quran itself, there's truths in the Quran and things, information in the Quran that I can't say what could have been known to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 1400 years ago, right? Things like the development of the embryo, things like the description of the mountains as, as tent pegs, things like there's a chapter of the Quran, it's called Ektarik. It means uh, to knock or the knocker. And this word is used to describe a star, specifically a pulsar star. Now, I don't know if you know, but the pulsar star, now that we have the ability to send probes into space, we're able to find out through receiving the data from those probes what they sound like. And this is what one sounds like. Oh, that's what it is. So that they were able to get the data from that probe, put it through their technology, and synthesize it to get that that's the sound of a pulsar star. My question to you, my friend, is how did a barefooted Arab in the 6th century of Arabia, illiterate. illiterate, who did not read or write, did not have any formal education, how did he know to describe a star as a knocker before NASA, before new satellites, before probes, before the rocket, or any of that? How did he know to describe it like that? He was tapping into the all-consciousness, the all-knowing, the spirit through prayer or meditation, which are two sides of the same point. They're not the same. Prayer is communicating to, and meditation is listening. Meditation is being and listening and quieting and nothing. Prayer is communicating once, once this way. Yeah. But so that's what, so that essentially you're saying that that information was from the Creator, right? So if we accept that that information can only come from the Creator, we don't believe as Muslims or any rational person, I think, would not believe that Profound divine knowledge would come to a false prophet. It can only come to a true prophet. Do you agree? No, I'd have to talk face to face. You know, I'd have to talk face to face to see, see the truth, see, see the love in his eye and his eye. Being in, in God, or I'm oh, sorry, I'm in, in himself, in the prophet. In the prophet? Yeah. yeah, this is because there are fake words. prophets, there are, there are words, words. Yeah, people can use all the words they want, but inside they could be lying, could just be okay. Uh, see, opposite. And you know, the, the, the objection you're bringing was brought um, in the past. Uh, there's three main objections. Either the Prophet Muhammad was crazy, peace be upon him. Either he was um, doing it for acquisition of some worldly gain, right? Or he is a true prophet. So, look at his actions. Exactly. So, he never was able to, uh, he did, the, 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 the chiefs of Mecca, they came to the Prophet and they asked him, can you, or they told him, stop preaching this monotheistic religion because they were all upon idol worship. And they said that we will give you all of the women, we will make you the, the greatest of the chiefs amongst the chiefs of Mecca. They basically offered him the world. And, and he was tested and he said no. 
my 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 dawa my my the, my mission is to convey the religion of Islam. That's all I'm supposed to do, right? So I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to sell out, basically, right? So right away, if that claim is brought forward, we say that's not what happened, right? Um, there's many reports of there were times in the household of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, where a fire was not lit, meaning that they would never cook any food in his house because they didn't have any money or wealth to obtain that, right? So the idea being, okay, if he did it for wealth and, and worldly yeah, gain, so where is it, where is it yeah. right? If he's crazy, why was he able to perform or create a, a prose in the Arabic language that the poets of Mecca, who were known for their... Uh, eloquent in the Arabic language, how was he able to produce something that rivaled them? For example, if we study Arabic grammar today, we study the Quran. We don't study, you know, like any other short story or anything like that. We study the Quran because its level of Arabic quality is like if I don't want to compare it to anything, but it's like if you were in English and you're studying Shakespeare, that level of English prose, you would find a very high quality of it in the writings of Shakespeare. You understand? So it's like, how did he, if he's crazy, do such a thing? Right. Right. So we 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 already negate that those two claims could be the case. So if he's a true prophet of God, what characteristics of a prophet of God should he have? He should be a generous person. He should be kind. Kind, yeah. yeah. Living with love. And His love is truth. Exactly. So, His love. So one uh, thing that you could take away from yourself is knowing that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his farewell sermon before he died, he told the people that the best of you are best to your... The, uh, the, best, of you, the best of you are best to your women, and I am the best to my women. So he's, he's telling the society that, in a society, by the way, that they were known for not liking female children, female infants. So much so that the Arabs at that time would bury their female babies alive. That's how many ones that not the, that. Exactly. But he came with a completely different narrative, right? That I'm... I am the best of my women, the best of you are the best of your women, and I am the best of my women. And he also came forward with a perspective that paradise lies under your mother's feet. He came with a perspective or uh, an authentic narration from the Prophet Muhammad that if anybody raises two daughters upon righteousness and they grow up to be pious, righteous women, that is a ticket for them to get to heaven. So he's... He's completely, you know, um, refuting the norms of a society that was very misogynistic and putting forward the claim that, you know, women have no value and that, you know, that male are here, women are here. He's refuting that claim, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like, if it was that he is not a false, if that he was a false prophet, why would he teach you only good things to be upon monotheism, to give in charity, to fast? For an entire month, like right now is the month yeah. of Ramadan. Yeah. We fast from before sunrise to sunset. It's not the reason, but many medical um, discoveries has learned that fasting and putting your body through strenuous hardship, like lack of food and water, actually has medical benefits to it. Right? You think you think it's, it's putting yourself through a stress body through a stressful situation, but really consuming all the time all the, what does that makes yeah. your body waste all your energy exactly the purpose of fasting is to regain your energy and and put it to the proper use exactly so think about it right like so exactly so think about like a religion that puts that in their pillars fasting is one of the pillars of islam all muslims have to fast for one month 29 to 30 days once a year why like why would a religion put that as, as something in their pillars as you are not a Muslim if you don't fast? Why? Doesn't it tickle your curiosity? Yeah, right? Because that's something that I, I, I've tried. I've tried and I've done already. So I know what it achieves within yourself. Mm. Not recently have I done it, but I know. You know that. I know the truth. Too. Exactly. I, exactly. So, I love that. The, what's more than that is like, 
for example, we're standing in a place where there's banks, right? Wouldn't a religion that is for all of society have a banking system that is ethical? Yeah, we're not run by ethical. I don't. I don't believe that any of the countries around the world, or very few, or we don't hear them, or they're under siege right now, actually have good people in power. Yeah. They're all run by evil, even way back. That's why they they were told to execute the female children because they knew the truth and they didn't want anybody be a part of the truth. Yes. So they made society believe out of fear in all of these things. And there's select few <laughs> that fought against that. Exactly, yeah. It did not it does not matter. They had courage. So with, with being threatened with death all the time. Yeah. Now if he is the prophet tied in and he knows what death actually is. Exactly. Nothing to be no, so like like you're saying, right? Like Obviously, a religion from God would have to take that into account. Now, I don't know if you know, but the destruction that interest-based loans has caused, or interest in the banking system in general has caused, countries that have surplus in minerals, in gold, in goods, right? African countries full of diamonds, full of minerals that Apple and Samsung and all use and exploit them. What they've done is, as you know, they'll say, you know, we'll give you a loan so that we can put infrastructure into your society, into your country, and then you have to pay us back on this interest. And those countries are still indebted. And they're never able to rise up. And people are wondering, like, how are you not able to get out of the debt that you are under if your country is so full of resources? It's because of that debt that the person with that has control on the debt, they decide what they can sell it to them at. You see, the goods that they have, they can decide how you sell it to it at. So that country is forever in debt. And because of that, if you look at it at a global scale, those countries are perpetually in poverty, in famine, in starvation, right? In constant chaos and war, right? So wouldn't a creator that wants an ethical banking system or an ethical economical system take into account that interest is unethical? Right? So what religion do you know says that interest is unethical? Many Buddhism, it, that would just tie into it being a material thing. That yeah. Has to but specifically saying that interest... I know it's zero. Islam. <laughs> okay, I know. So... Islam is the only world religion that makes it an article of its belief that you have to believe that taking interest, producing interest, um, um, benefiting from interest, witnessing interest, any of these things that involve interest, it is impermissible. Like I, as a Muslim, I can't have a mortgage on my house. Why? Because it is based off interest. Right. I can only rent or I can buy a house in cash, which is not going to happen in 2024, right? But the point is, is interest, because it's unethical, I cannot engage in it, right? So it's something to think about that a religion from the creator should take into account an ethical economic system, yet Islam is the only one that does that? Well, definitely the most ethical, high, moral, yeah. You come across. That's my claim. He has like description for every role, like for men, what men should do, what women should do, how our society should run. Like, we need like details, you know, like instructions to everybody. That's pretty hard. For an editor guy, that's, that's very hard. Especially with the miracles in the Quran, like the sun has an orbit. Who knows? Who knows that it's like uh, 1400 years ago that the sun had an it's all free. Please take whatever you like. I also have um, the, the English translation of the meanings of the Quran. So if you would like that, I can take that up for you as well. Just give me a second. These two, they have good oh. pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you need a little bit more entertainment.
So yes, it's all free. And if you would like to speak, I have any questions, I'm right here. Thank you. That uh, people of Arabs, brother, who are not that rich, will compete in making big buildings. And you see, you see now in Dubai and Saudi, they were really poor people. And it's in our uh, hadith book. Big predictions, big miracles. So that that uh, what makes us believe that this is the book. That cannot be like said from an illiterate guy who is just making things up. Plus, making no errors. Such a big book, no errors. People are trying to find any errors. They are they are unable on in any system. So that, what do you think of that? Okay, what are those hats? <laughs> this hat right here? <laughs> do you want it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you look good, man. You look good. Yeah. Hey, do you want to take some books? <laughs> They're all free. <laughs> this is the English translation of the meanings of the Quran. Do you have one? Yeah, sure. I think I have one left. You're in luck. <laughs> Lujain, that means silver. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Lujain means silver. Can you mind if I have that last one? They're all free, by the way. They're all free. That's the last one I have. I'm sorry. That's why I asked you for Thank you. No problem. Okay. Hey, girl. All I can tell you is you have to read. And then believe. You can't be just forced and like people can't just force you to believe that. You just do your research yeah. and if you're sure, mm -hmm. then don't delay because life is short. You never know when we're dead. Yeah, I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody should be afraid of that, but that should be strange. It's a, it's a truth. But it's like if you believe that there's a creator and you believe that he gave us revelation. And you should also believe in what the revelation says about the afterlife. That there is a heaven and a hellfire. Right? And you want to try and avoid the hellfire at all costs. Right? That's so the only way to avoid that hellfire is first believing that there is that one creator. And he sent many messengers throughout time. And the last one is the Prophet Muhammad. If you die upon that belief and you don't associate partners with that one creator in worship, then you have that promise of heaven. But if you die upon polytheism or disbelief, then the promise is the hellfire. And it's the worst of abodes. So it's something that we should, like you said, at least learn about. Yeah. If there's a claim about the afterlife that says that there is these two places that I could go, I should know about it or I should learn about it and find out is the claim true. <laughs> لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر بادية